This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and thanks for joining us today. Today, I'm going to be talking all about triage. And if you ever have to take your dog or your cat or any pet into the veterinary emergency room, you want to pay attention. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee. If your dog likes to chew, you don't want them chewing your furniture or your shoes. So give them Natural Farm all-natural dog chews and bones, made from sustainably sourced ingredients that are free from artificial colorings, preservatives, and chemicals. Check out their gully sticks, bully sticks, and collagen sticks in flavors like bully stick, peanut butter, and chicken, and their stuffed collagen and stuffed bones. Big dogs or little dogs, you can choose your chews. Go to naturalfarmpet.com and save 15% off with code ERVET15. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, I'm going to be talking about triage. Now, you guys know I'm an emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist, and I've talked about this in previous episodes. My whole point of this show on Pet Life Radio ER Vet is to help keep your dog and your cat out of the veterinary ER. But sometimes you have to go in the middle of the night. And I will say during COVID for the past two and a half plus years, veterinary clinics have been so, so busy. In fact, I feel it. I know you guys are all super frustrated about not being able to get into your veterinarian. Now, I will say during COVID, I have never even seen so many dogs being walked in my neighborhood. In fact, I didn't even know some of my neighbors had dogs until COVID happened. And I would see them walking their dogs a lot, which is fantastic because we were able to get out of the house for mental health. However, during that time period, for the past two and a half years, what's actually happened is that there has been a record number of pet owners who have actually fostered or adopted or purchased dogs and cats. And I think a lot of that is because of the mental health and the joy and the companionship that pets bring us. And that was so important during COVID. But of course, you guys are aware, it was really hard to get into veterinary clinics during the first year or two of COVID. Now, I will say I work in an emergency clinic and the emergency room wait went from a two to four hour wait on a busy Sunday to a five to 12 hour wait in the emergency room during COVID. Why? Well, first of all, there's several reasons for this. I know that in Minnesota, where I practice, for the first few months during COVID, we were actually mandated to not do elective procedures by the state. And the main reason why is because we had to give up our PPE to make sure that human medical care providers had access to masks, like surgical masks that we use all the time, and sterile gloves, and all these really important supplies that were needed to treat people with COVID. Okay, totally legit. We want to make sure we're taking care of our human sick people. However, because of that, veterinarians were backed up for three to four to six months because we didn't have PPE and because we weren't doing elective procedures. And you know what elective procedures are. They're things that aren't emergency. In other words, it's a spay or a neuter or a dew claw removal or dental procedure. So they're routine surgeries that need to be done. Trust me, my neighbor was complaining to me about how they adopted a new puppy and they couldn't even get in to spay their dog until the dog had already gone into heat. We get it. At any rate, because of that, veterinary clinics have been super, super busy. The second reason why veterinary clinics have been so busy is because of lack of staff. Now, you can imagine if you had to work from home for the past two and a half years for veterinary professionals, including veterinary technicians, if they were parents, it was really hard to work when they had to homeschool their kid or be with their children at home. So unfortunately, it was really hard to run essential veterinary clinics without all our staff. 
The third reason is because everybody adopted so many pets or they didn't surrender them to animal rescues or animal shelters as often as they used to. We veterinarians were bombarded. So that's why I wanted to take the time to talk about triage for today's ER vet episode. If you've called your vet or you've called an emergency vet, they'll often almost try to convince you not to come in, which sounds weird. That's the first time that's ever happened in my experience in the past two and a half years. And that's because we're basing it on triage. Now, the true definition of triage is sorting of the masses. And I believe the term dates back to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago when they would find people that were injured on the battlefield and they would triage and decide who was going to die and who was going to live. And so triage, again, means sorting of the masses. When we use the word triage, that means we're trying to determine what is the most sick. And I've seen a lot of important triage in the veterinary ER. Now, what we're going to talk about is color coding. And we'll use something sort of like the stop sign, red light, yellow light, and green light. When do you actually need to go into the emergency room? Now, I'm going to say about 80% of the time, when I see things coming into the emergency room, most of the time they could have waited to go to their veterinarian to be seen. That said, I end up hospitalizing anywhere between 20 to maybe 50% of the patients that I see. So we're going to go through triage because this will help you determine whether or not you need to get into your own veterinarian or not. Now, I will always say, when in doubt, preventative medicine is the most important thing. If you guys have listened to previous episodes of ER Vet, you know I'm all about making sure your pet is exercised. If you have a dog, if you have a dog, exercising them for 30 minutes a day, making sure that they have two levels of obedience training. In previous episodes of ER Vet, I've actually dedicated two whole episodes on just dog training. If you have a well-trained dog and they're appropriately exercised, they're going to come back to you when you call them and they're less likely to be hit by a car. If they've been appropriately trained at a training facility with you and your family, they'll know how to heal, sit, stay, lie down, and get off certain things. So a well-trained dog is going to help prevent any kind of trauma. It's going to help prevent things like your dog running across the road to catch a squirrel and unfortunately getting hit by a car. So preventative medicine is key. The next part of preventative medicine, making sure you schedule an annual visit with your veterinarian for your dog and your cat. And I mean now, you know, it's going to take eight to 12 weeks to get an open appointment. So call today to schedule that. You always want to make sure that your pet gets an annual physical examination. If you have a middle-aged cat or an older cat, they may not need vaccines, but they still need a physical examination. As an ER vet, I can pick up so many things on physical examination, like an overactive thyroid or muscle loss or small kidneys or even a palpable cancerous mass in the abdomen. I can escult a heart murmur. I can look at dental disease. I can look for abnormalities sooner. And as you know, from my previous episodes at ER Vet, preventative medicine is so important because the sooner we identify a problem, the sooner we can treat it. All right. So I already talked about preventative medicine, keeping your dog on a leash, keeping your cat indoors, making sure your dog is well exercised, making sure your dog has had two levels of obedience training, making sure you have an annual physical examination, making sure that your pet is up to date on vaccines. They go through the whole puppy series. They get their annual vaccine for several years in a row. And then once they're well protected, I actually recommend changing the vaccine schedule to every three years while still doing an annual exam. These vaccines are super important to protect your dog or your cat from diseases like distemper or parvovirus or panleukopenia, which are super, super infectious. It's important to make sure to keep your dog on flea and tick preventative to make sure your cat, if they are indoor, outdoor, is also on flea and tick preventative to keep your dog and cat on heartworm preventative. A lot of these things sound expensive up front, but I promise you they will save you thousands of dollars in the end and really keep your pet healthier. When in doubt, my little tip is do exactly what your veterinarian does for their own pet because they're going to actually do the same exact things that I'm recommending. All right. So back to triage, when it comes to keeping your dog or cat out of the emergency room, you want to follow those preventative steps, but there are some situations where you must, must, must 
get into the emergency room. And I'm talking in the middle of the night. If your dog or cat ever wakes you up in the middle of the night, they're panting over you, they're pacing back and forth, they wake you up because you're crying out in pain, they're doing this at 2 a.m., that usually warrants a call to the emergency room. So always trust your gut instinct. So when is it a true emergency? First of all, if your dog or cat wakes you up in the middle of the night, that's often an emergency. If they're having difficulty breathing, if they collapse or they're not able to get up, if they're seizuring and they've never seizured before, if it's any kind of trauma, like they were hit by a car or they were bitten by another pet or they have some type of injury, they fell out a window, you want to get to the ER right away. If they have profuse bleeding from a wound, if they were bitten by a snake, if they were bitten by a spider, if they have persistent non-productive retching, especially if they're a large or giant breed dog because we're worried about a twisted stomach. If it's a cat, if they're straining to urinate or no urine has come, sorry, delete that part, or no urine has been seen in the litter box for greater than 18 to 24 hours, you need to get into the veterinary ER. So again, these are true emergencies. If it's an acute poisoning, you want to get in right away because we want to be able to find out if it was poisonous, if we can decontaminate your pet, and we want to be able to treat it sooner than later because the prognosis is much better. Now, I will say I recently had a pet that was just brought into the ER and their dog had been bitten by another dog over five days ago and they just brought their dog in now. And this dog had a huge, huge, what we call an eschar over their belly button area that was about five inches big. This basically meant that this skin was necrotic. When it comes to bite wounds, bite wounds are the tip of an iceberg. There could be a tiny, tiny wound on the surface of the skin, and there can be significant injury underneath that. So to me, any bite wound should always go to the ER or to a veterinarian. In this scenario, if the owner initially came in five days before, we could sedate that pet. We could flush it out. We could take x-rays. We could do some blood work. We can do minor surgery. Five days later, once that whole skin area has sloughed off, it's going to be a much more expensive, much more painful ordeal for your pet. So when in doubt, trust me, you want to get to the veterinary ER sooner than later. All right. The next part is yellow. So red light, yellow light. Yellow light is semi-urgent. It means it needs to be seen soon, but sometimes this can be seen at your veterinarian as an urgent care appointment. So what am I talking about? If your pet is vomiting. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, we've talked about how people have way too much tolerance for cat vomiting. If your cat vomits once a week, it's not normal. If you vomited once a week for years on end, wouldn't you think that's abnormal? So when in doubt, please don't tolerate vomiting in cats. If it's vomiting and it's a couple of episodes, three to four times, my general recommendation is to take away food and water. But if your pet becomes more lethargic or listless or continues to vomit, please get to an emergency vet or your veterinarian. If it's acute diarrhea without vomiting, this is also semi-urgent. I recommend removing any food. And if they're not vomiting, you can still keep the water bowl available. But you do want to call your veterinarian to get the earliest available appointment just in case your dog gets worse or your cat gets worse. If your pet is straining to defecate, If there's blood in the urine or your pet is straining to urinate, if it's a really small wound or laceration, if it's a broken toenail, if there's abnormalities to the eye, like they're squinting or the eye's really swollen, if it's an allergic reaction, if you noticed uh, any kind of minor trauma, these are still situations where I I define them as semi-urgent and still recommend getting into your vet or to the emergency vet. You just have to be prepared for a wait. Now, I know I'm going to add a little confusion here. I know there's only red, yellow, and green on stoplights, but I'm going to add an orange in. Orange is going to go between, yes, it's a true emergency, and yellow, which is semi-urgent. Orange, I'm going to define as urgent. This is persistent vomiting. Okay, your dog's vomited three or four times. Your cat's vomited six times. You've taken away the water bowl, and it's not getting better. It's persistent. It's been 12 episodes. It's been 20 episodes of vomit. Please, that is urgent. You need to get in. 
if your pet's lost your appetite for more than 24 hours, if you think your dog or cat has eaten something abnormal, that's what we call a foreign body. They ate a golf ball or they ate a ribbon or some dental floss or they ate some garbage. This can definitely cause some illness, especially if it gets stuck in the stomach or the intestines. If your pet has had multiple seizures within a 24-hour period, even if they're not actively seizing, this is what we call cluster seizures. And this also needs to be seen in the ER because each time your pet seizures, it lowers their seizure threshold and they're more and more likely to seizure again and again. If it's diarrhea that's not getting any better, you've taken away the food, but now your pet is vomiting, well, they can really quickly get dehydrated. So a little bit of blood and diarrhea, I'm not too worried about. But once they show signs of malaise, lethargy, not eating, vomiting, that is urgent and should come in. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Molly, here's your dinner. Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to ER Venom Pet Life Radio. We've been talking about the importance of triage, what we do to sort the masses in the emergency room. If you go to your emergency room in the middle of the night and you see it's really crowded, there's a bunch of people waiting, please keep in mind, sometimes we'll see certain owners and pets sooner than your pet. Please don't get mad. This happens in the human ER too. And it's usually based on triage. It really depends on if it's a true emergency, what I define as red light versus urgent, which is orange light versus semi-urgent, which is yellow. So the more urgent or the more deadly the situation, those cases need to be seen immediately. The less urgent or non-urgent, just to warn you, you're going to be waiting in the ER for a really, really long time, which then brings me to green light. These are non-urgent cases that are coming to the emergency room. And I'm going to say, please try to generally avoid this because honestly, you're going to receive more care at your general veterinarian instead of coming into the emergency vet for this. You're also going to wait like eight to 12 hours and your bill is going to be more expensive. In a previous episode of ER Vet, I talked about why costs are higher in emergency room, and it's because we have to have different supplies like blood transfusions, CAT scans, immediate blood work access. So the costs are generally going to be more expensive. So for non-urgent green light triage, you do want to make an appointment with your regular family veterinarian. So what's non-urgent? In general, red skin or red eyes or hair loss or anything chronic. In general, itchiness, scratchiness, things that annoy you but are not really an emergency should not be seen in the ER. Not only are you taking away valuable resources for a pet that could potentially be dying, but you're going to wait for a really long time. So when in doubt, that's why you want to see your family practitioner for things like this. So again, non-urgent situations include hair loss, chronic illness with no recent change in condition, chronic weight loss, itching or scratching, even one single seizure with full recovery that is a seizure less than five minutes is considered non-urgent. If you're not sure, you always want to call the emergency clinic or your veterinarian because they may be able to help triage over the phone for you. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, I talked about the difference between feline lower urinary tract disease and feline urethral obstruction, or what I call a 
blockage or UO, a urethral obstruction. Sometimes it's really hard to differentiate if your cat has a life-threatening true emergency with the urinary blockage versus if they have what we call feline lower urinary tract disease, which is a cystitis. That's when their bladder is really inflamed and they feel the urgency to urinate all the time. They make 80 trips in the litter box, but nothing comes out. And oftentimes I will triage this in the waiting room. And you can actually ask the emergency veterinarian and say, can you triage my cat and let me know if my cat is blocked versus if it's a, a cystitis case or a feline lower urinary tract disease. And a lot of times they'll triage you away to go to your veterinarian as long as your cat's not blocked. So you can always ask to be triaged too. So there you have it. That's what we call the fast track triage. This really helps determine whether or not you truly have a real emergency with your dog or cat when you go into the emergency room. So red light, that's a true emergency. You need to get into the vet even if it's in the middle of the night. So you want to make sure you have the closest location to an emergency vet, that you have it pre-programmed in your phone, in your GPS, in your cell phone. Remember, that's different than orange, which means urgent yellow, which is semi-urgent, and green, which is non-urgent. So remember, if you have a green non-urgent emergency, please don't come into the ER, especially on the weekends where it's super busy. You do want to go to your regular veterinarian or your family veterinarian for that. When in doubt, if you're not sure, please always call your vet or your emergency vet or even the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center to get advice. Now, there's a couple of special considerations I wanted to mention. Please know all veterinarians, all emergency clinics usually will provide humane euthanasia. Um, So there's no triage for that. If that's something where you feel you're going to make that decision, um, that usually is available 24 hours a day at an emergency clinic. And if you have an exotic pet, like birds, reptiles, lizards, hedgehogs, anything like that, they have to be triaged on a totally different scale. Those are usually emergent. So when in doubt, you always want to call for life-saving advice. Hopefully, I won't see you in the veterinary ER. And hopefully, you're going to keep your dog and cat safe with some of the previous hints that I've mentioned in my previous episodes of ER Vet. So definitely make sure to check those out. With that, that brings me to the end of today's show. Hope you found this information helpful. And if so, please take the time to write a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. That helps make sure that our podcasts are being listened to all the pet owners out there. You can also find me at drjustinelee.com on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee or email me your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. With that, we're out of time and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.